Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 8th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Indianapolis, Indiana. Attackers always try to get persistence on exploited systems, often by scheduling tasks. Now, Xavier recently ran into a malware sample that did just that by creating a job file that was then used in Windows to start a scheduled task. The job files Windows uses to define these scheduled tasks are written in XML and you can parse them manually but that's of course tedious and not much fun. So Xavier found a Python script written by Jamie Levy that does the boring task for you and will spit out a summary of what the particular job tries to accomplish. And remember double ganging. This was a vulnerability or really a technique described late last year in December that allows an attacker to essentially swap files that are loaded from NTFS volumes. The trick here is that you do load a file into memory after it has been inspected, for example, by antivirus, but you're actually loading a different file into memory, not the one that was inspected. So with this, it's possible to get malware to run that would otherwise be intercepted by anti-malware solutions. Well, according to some reports, this technique has now been adapted by the Synac ransomware in order to bypass anti-malware. In addition, this version of Synac also makes it particularly difficult to reverse engineer it with a number of anti-reversing tricks. One sort of interesting little side note here is like most malware, Synac does delete a number of processes that it considers either hurting its performance or potentially interfering with it. Well, typically you can find in malware a list of all the names that this particular malware tries to kill. In the case of Synac, it actually doesn't actually have a list of file names or process names it's trying to kill. Instead, it just contains a list of hashes of processes that it tries to kill. So this makes it, of course, more difficult to figure out what this version of Synac is after. Securelist, uh, which is part of Kaspersky, did brute force this list of processes and was able to derive many of the names that are affected. In this particular case, the list actually doesn't include any antivirus software, so as far as I can tell by a quick glance on it. It does contain backup software, and that of course makes some sense for a ransomware that tries to disrupt backups. Kind of more interesting, it does try to stop things like databases and office software. Quite often, this software does keep files open that the user is working at and does protect them from being written to. So by killing actually this software, the ransomware will be able to encrypt files that are currently open. An exploitation of Drupal servers remains quite active. Latest reports are a couple of sort of larger sites, like for example, the San Diego Sioux and some Mexican government sites being compromised in order to install crypto ransomware. All affected sites had the CoinHive miner installed on them and looks like around 300 sites or so were affected by this particular set of compromises. And Russia continues its whack the mole strategy in order to block access to Telegram. Latest victim are 50 different VPN services and apparently Russia blocked access to these VPN services over them providing access to Telegram. Probably unrelated, but still somewhat interesting Yevgeny Legerov, a very productive vulnerability researcher that somewhat focuses on mobile apps and the like, announced that he has a zero-day exploit for Telegram. No details, however, so this doesn't have to be anything substantial, but he has some history of actually publishing a valid exploit code. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.